and extend your arms out. We're going to lift up Miss Leola. And we're going to pray that the Most High would anoint her. You see, I already know that she is like the prophet that has fire shut up in her bones. And so we know that and we believe the word of God that he is a consuming fire. So, Father, I pray that you would consume this vessel from head to toe tonight and that you would use her, that you would speak through her, that you would fill her mouth up with every word that you have spoken to her in private, that she would speak it in public, that you would anoint her, that you would show forth your favor and that we would be blessed by the word today, that we would be edified and that we would not leave the same, that we would be made new and different and better for your glory God we asking that you would do something miraculous we know that you can do it that you're no respecter of persons what you can do for one you could do for all so we pray that you would do it tonight in Jesus name in Jesus name if you believe it say in Jesus name amen amen Here. I'm not used to using a mic. I know I'm loud. <laughs> but I am going to try and um, use this mic tonight. First, I want to say good evening to everyone. Wow, that song, Great is Your Faithfulness. I mean, it was right on time. We, are you going to trust Him in the storm? You know, storms come in our life. And the thing about it is while you're in a storm, sometimes you kind of get a little nervous. But guess what? When you set your mind on him, you say, you know what? I'm going to go through this and I'm going to be victorious in it. So that's what we got to keep ourselves, keep reminding ourselves who we serve. We serve a true and a living God, a God that loves us. A, you know what? When I woke up this morning, I felt so good to just to know I could open my eyes once again. You know, somebody did not wake up. And so when I got up and I got down on my knees, I said, Lord, thank you for another day. I am so blessed to be here. And guys, I just want to take one second, one moment just to thank my God. You know, First Lady did an awesome prayer, but I just want to say, Lord, you know what? I want you to use me, Lord. Father, I don't want it to be my words, dear God. I want it to be your words, dear Father. Father, I want everything, dear God, that you have placed in me, that you want me to say. I want to say it, dear God. I'm asking that you let the Holy Spirit just take control of not only me, but everyone that's in this room, Lord God. Father, I just want to thank you for our First Lady, Lord God. I want to thank you for our pastor, dear God. Father, thank you, dear God, that they not only listens to your voice, dear God. They lead us, dear God, in the path of righteousness for your name's sake, Lord God. And Father, we just want to thank you for our pastor, our first lady, for Annalise, for Grace, for Omar, dear God, because Father, they are our family together, working together to try to get us so that we can look to the heavens for where our help comes from. And so Father, for all of this right now, Lord God, I just say thank you Thank you, dear God, for giving me the, uh, the, the, the opportunity to share your word, dear God, with these nine people, Lord God. And I don't take it lightly, Father. So I ask this in your son Jesus' name. Okay, how is that? Okay, everyone can hear me? Well, that's good. That's much a little, well, I don't know. <laughs> All right, thank you, Mom. This one is already off. Oh. <laughs> okay. okay. I think we're okay. All right. Uh oh, okay. So y'all, I'm really nervous now, Glow. I don't need this thing to help me. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna keep this one. <laughs> okay. yeah. What y'all think? I'm good, I'm, I'm okay. good. Let's oh, put that one back on. All right, that's better. All right.
So, I don't want to keep you here all night, so I want to just go straight into the word. And so our word is coming out of 2 Samuel, uh, the 13th chapter, and we're only going to read verses 12 to 14. I want to tell y'all something. Uh, this word was a hard word, but it's important. And anything God puts in this book, he wants us to pay attention to it. So I'm going to read this, and um, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and move on. So in verse 12, and I'm reading out the NIV version. I think they have it for us. Okay. <clears throat> so it starts off, no, my brother, she said unto him, don't force me. Such a thing should not be done in Israel. Don't do this wicked thing. What about me? Where could I get rid of my disgrace? And what about you? You would be like one of the wicked fools in Israel. Please speak to the king. He will not keep me from being married to you. But he refused to listen to her. And since she was stronger, since he was stronger than, than she, he raped her. Now some of you are saying, uh, this is what we're talking about tonight. Yes, it is. You know, but pastor always taught us that if God put it there, he wanted us to pay attention to it. <clears throat> so when you go through this, and you know, uh, Sam talked about uh, David on yesterday. And this is David's daughter. Her name is Tamar. And a lot of times I've never, I don't hear too much uh, teachings on Tamar. Because like I said, it is a hard teaching. Uh, I struggled with his glow and went over and over with it. And I wanted y'all to see this lady because, you know what, I am the king's daughter. That's our topic. I want you to say that. I am, I am the, king's the king's daughter. I want you to really say it like you mean it. I am, I am the king's daughter. The king's daughter. Well, David was the king, right? And this is his daughter, Tamar. Now, how many of you ever heard the story about Tamar? A few heard the story about Tamar. I want to bring it to you in a, in a way that you can see and feel how Tamar was feeling. You know, we all go through some traumatic incidents, events. We all have trauma. Uh, I, I heard First Lady talk one time, and she said, we all came from brokenness. And our last Bible lesson, our First Lady did an excellent job, and her topic was the formula, a formula of prayer. And it was out of Matthew. And she was telling us, one of the things that I took away from that was forgiveness is a characteristics of the believer. You know what? That is our DNA. We're supposed to be able to be in a position of forgiveness. Am I right? So when we, when we do, that, do that, we show who our father, who our king is. Uh, one of the other things she said in that, in our discussions, was that... Um, who we should forgive, and how hard it is to forgive, the areas we should forgive in, and what actions we should going to take with forgiveness. And some of us who were here, those of you who was here, we got in little groups, and we kind of talked about it. And first lady, while I was in the group, while we were talking about it, we found ourselves thinking like, you know, some people were in there, you know, like, I, I want to get to that place. I'm working on getting that place. You know, you ever been broken? Do you know the difference between being broken and hurt? Now you think about it. If you were riding your bicycle, and I done done it before when I first rode, and you slip and you skin your leg, you hurt, right? But it's a difference when you break it. You know, you gotta go, you gotta, you're gonna have to go to a doctor. Because you know what, it takes time for brokenness to mend. So even in the, in the midst of our forgiveness, it takes some time some, for us to forgive. But guess what? You ought to be moving it on. Because sometimes Satan wants us to just stop right there and believe that every time we look at someone else, we don't let nobody in because somebody hurt us. And so you miss out on people's lives because you don't want nobody in. You, you, you're so full of what somebody else did you that you think everybody's going to treat you the very same way. And so we want to talk about this young lady named Tamar. But let me tell you something. Let me give you a little bit about introduction with this. Now, we're talking about David's daughter. 
Now, one of the things that we have always heard about David's daughter is that what? David, that David is a what? A man after God's own heart. Now, but another thing that David did, he liked the women. <laughs> so David had a lot of wives. So when we're going to talk about this story in this, we're going to talk about some of David's children. But isn't it funny? I have not seen it. Maybe some of you have seen other uh, of David's daughters mentioned. That's the only one I had, I saw. They named her, and her name was Tamar. And we're going to learn something from Tamar today. But another thing I want you to see in this is that uh, out of the whole 2 Samuel, that whole chapter of 2 Samuel, if you go from the first chapter to the 10 first, it's going to talk about all David's successes and all of his victories. But in the middle of that chapter, we talk about David's sin. And not only that, not only I want you to see that his successes and his victories, but during that time, because of the successes and victories, there was a unified Israel. And I want you to see this because sometimes, Sam mentioned it. I'm like, Sam, you come, I'm coming right after you. <laughs> I was like, oh, boy, you're going to make this hard for me. In the, right in the middle of it, when sin comes in the camp, failure and defeat starts to go down. One thing we don't want to happen in Philadelphia is failure. So guess what? We got to get rid of the what? The sin. And sometimes we come in broken. We come in here broken, hurting, and we think everybody sees our brokenness. We hide it. We cover it. We think sometimes we covered it. We put makeup. We can do everything with our hair. We dress it up, and we walk in here, and we leave out broken. And nobody knows. Nobody knows. And the minute somebody passed by and they didn't say hello, you think, they don't like me. You came broken. You think it's, it's them, but it's all in you. And so sometimes we got to get healing for ourselves so that we can be among each other. Because you know what? When, when Pastor and First Lady named this church, they named it Philadelphia, and it comes out of Revelation, and it's the church of brotherly love. We want to be that church. They've been talking to us about it. They've been trying to pull us up there so we can be support. Because, Mary, I need you. We need each other. I need you to survive. Because, you know, women go through, we go through a lot, women. You know, the men say, oh, you know, I got to be able to provide and everything. But look all we do. We got to take care of the children. We got to take care of the husband. We got to go to, some of us go to work. We take out care of our job. And guess what? When we come back, work is still there. Sometimes our men come home, they can relax because <laughs> we don't cook, you know. But Sam cooks more this time, though, you know, for me. <laughs> but you understand, we carry a lot. We, we, do, we carry a lot on our shoulders. And guess what? Our minds never stop thinking. And I'm going to tell you this. Sometimes our minds are so flooded, flooded with the things that we got to go do in the day that we could be driving along and didn't even realize we just passed home. I don't know if it ever happened to you. But let me tell you one thing that happened to me before we get into our lesson. I had everything planned, everything that I needed to do. I said, I'm going to go to lunch. And I'm going to go take my errands. I'm going to go pay this bill. I'm going to go take care of this and that. And I'm driving down the highway. We're actually in our Palooses. All of a sudden, I'm like, I'm like, already done plan how long is it going to take me to get to the store. I done turn my keys off, and I'm still in the road. I have not even parked. I talked to myself. I said, now, Leo, you lost your mind. <laughs> I said, you got to take the time and stop and think. I went back to the store, and I said, you know what? This is gonna, I'm going to wait. I'm not going to eat right now because I got to get my mind right. So I went back to the store, and I prayed. I said, okay, now, Lord, I know I got all these things that I got to do, but I got to get my mind right because you know what? Satan want to catch you when you're off guard. That's when he catches us. That's when we overlook something the children didn't do. Or we, oh, we overlook. And you know what? We got to be protective of our little girls. And I used to say just our little girls, but now we got to be protective of our little boys. So we overlook some things, and then you get home, and you're like, you know what? I did not get all this done. And you know why? Because Satan wanted you to be distracted with everything that's going on in life. And guys, I mean ladies, we got to take the time and say, stop. That's what we got to do. We got to say, stop. Yeah, I got to go pay this bill, but I'm going to wait. You know, it's just going to be late today because I got to stop. I got to get my mind together. I got to get my thoughts ready. So now we're going to go into this lesson, y'all. So I was sick. We're going to have six points. They're going to be quick. First point is my brother. 
The second point is, what about me? What about me? The third one, speak to the king. The third one, the fourth one, I'm sorry, refuse to listen. And number five, where is Tamar? And number six, I am the king's daughter. What is our topic? I am the king's daughter. You know, uh, scripture tells us in, um, I think it's in First Peter, that you are a chosen, I'm, and I'm reading it out the NIV, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And you know, in this scripture in NIV, it says God's special possession. <laughs> and that's what God think of us. Sometimes we don't feel special, but I'm God's special possession. What I want you to take away from here tonight is to know who you are. That you are what? You're God's special position possession, because he possesses you. And if he has not possessed you tonight before you leave, we want to get to him. You want, want you to get connected with him so that he can possess you. I'm his special possession. I am the king's daughter. You might not feel like royalty. Your bank account might not show you royalty. Your house might not show you royalty. But baby, let me let you know something right now. I'm the king's daughter. <laughs> I want you to leave with that because you know what? When the trials of life comes and you think nobody cares, nobody loves me, nobody's seen me through this, you know what I'm, you're going to be able to say? I am the king's daughter. I'm the king's daughter. So I'm trying to get my little nervousness out, y'all. <laughs> Most of you know already I'm a talker. But, but girl, I thought about you when I, when I started this verse 12. He says, no with a strong negative response. He says, no, my brother. You know what I thought about Glow when I said that? You ain't well. <laughs> you coming at me like that, you must not be well. You done hit your head on something. Because you know what brother, you know what brother means? You know, we call each other sister and brothers. Relationship, right? I don't know if you have any brothers. I actually had five brothers. I have one brother that is deceased, and we were very close. Let me tell you something about my brother. My brother, he will stand guard over me. He protect me. If you see some old knucklehead coming to talk to me, I'm like, oh, no, boy, you're not talking to my sister. Because that's what a brother does. A brother does not try and take your possession. That's what a brother does not. Tamar, and in this lesson, let me just give you a, a, a you know, pastor say something that, really stuck with me through, he said that we're, we, are, we, we are not all bad. We're not all good, but we're not all bad. Yeah. David wasn't all good, but he wasn't all bad. One thing David didn't do, he didn't really take care of his children as he should have. One thing I saw, but what, what I want you to see in this, in the chapter before that, when you look at the 11th chapter of 2 Samuel, it talks about how David sinned with Bathsheba. That's when the downfall started. And David thought he would cover his sins. So uh, when he found out that uh, Bathsheba had a husband, that was a stoplight right there, big old stop sign, big red stop sign saying stop. But what he did, he still inquired about her. That's when the downfall started, when sin came in. Not only that, on the 12, when you look at the 12th verse, the 12th chapter of 2 Samuel, Bathsheba, the first baby she had, we all know she lost it. Yeah. Well, now she's in labor for her second child. And, and David right now should be in war again, and he's with Bathsheba as Solomon is being born. It's distraction. Satan want to keep us distracted. So now he got this going on. His warrior, Joab, they are in war, and Joab, they already conquered that nation. And Joab sends a servant to him and says, David, if you don't come and claim this land, I'm going to put my own name on it. So now David got to leave there to go here. So now, if you look at the first, chap first verse in chapter uh, 13, which we are right now, it said a little time had been passed. And it said Amnon, who is the sister of uh, Tamar, felt, well, said he, he was in love with her. Well, we're going to find out that it was nothing but lust. But he said he loved her. And so uh, this is how he describes her. He says, Absalom my brother, sister. Now, Absalom and Tamar are sister and brother. 
with both dad and mom. Now, his, uh, Absalom, let me give you just a little, little bit of history. Absalom and Tamar, they have kingship on both sides because their grandfather is a king. He's a, a king of, of Geisha. So he's a king. So they have royalty on both sides. And Amnon has a different mother, and his mother name is Ananon, and she's a Jezreelite. So you see the conflict? But Amnon is uh, David's firstborn. Absalom is his second, okay. and here's Tamar. And he sends word that he tells he's, he's fallen sick in love. Now, you see the distraction that David has? Yeah. So now David is tending to Bathsheba. Then all of a sudden, Joab called him. He got to go here. And now Amnon sins and says, I'm sick. And it was all manipulation. So he goes to see Amnon. Satan wants to keep us busy so that we can't think of what the actions we are taking. So when Amnon said that and he goes to him, something should have clicked in David when he says, I want my sister to come and feed me. All the servants that he have in the house, why would he need her to come and feed him? Okay, so I'll catch y'all up to that part. So when you get to the part with my brother, these are some of the things that a brother does. One of the things a brother is a what? A protector. One of the other things, he will stand up and defend. A brother will fight for you. So he wasn't showing the brotherly love. So when she says my brother, she was trying to get him to catch his head. So if I tell you my brother, you're going to recognize. So because this sickness, what you have, you must have hit your head on something, boy. Yeah. Trying to take me to bed with you. Understand? So she tries to bring that to him. Well, let me tell you something, sisters. We sisters, right? Yes. We call each other what? Sisters. We recognize each other as what? Sisters. We in sororities, we call each other sisters. We in fraternities, the men call themselves brothers. So if you were my sister, the same obligation that he had to his sister, we have to each other. Amen. To protect. Yes. To stand up for. Protect one another's reputation. To love one another. Guess what? If we would do all this, unity would be in this place. We want to keep the unity because guess what? Where there is unity, there is strength. And you know what? Sometimes we walk in here broken and hurting and we don't know who to talk to. Because you know why? Somebody did hurt you. Somebody didn't keep their word with you. And you think every woman in here is just like that person. Wow. It is time for us as a Philadelphia church, Philadelphia women, to be that oneness. Yeah. I want to see us as a unified body. Yeah. That I can walk in here, and if I'm broken, one of you going to see it on my face. Yeah. Because that's one thing we can't do, we can't hide it. I've been telling my husband, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm not really feeling... Good. You know, he come in the house, he said, everything all right? Yeah, I'm doing good. He said, I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> I, because there is something about your expression yeah. that says who you are, says how you're feeling. Some of you come in here broken. And why do you leave out broken? Because somebody hurt you. And, it's, and every time somebody's tried to get close to you, that little trigger, that traumatic experience that you didn't had before comes right back. So when he says, my brother, he's, she's telling him, I want you to catch your head because I am your sister. Okay, that's one thing about it. Okay, and he says, it will, well, he will not allow anyone to hurt or harm you. So if you even hear someone having a bad conversation and it's about that person or about anyone, it's a time to say, you know what, that ain't right. Shouldn't do that. You know what? That's going to make them catch their head. That's how we got to do. We got to what? Catch our head. Because sometimes we stumble. Sometimes we do fail. Sometimes, you know, we, we, we can do that. But guess what? What we can do is shake it off and get back on track and say, you know what? I'm not going to do that to my sister. I don't know if y'all, any of you have sisters. And I don't know about y'all. I got, I, I have four sisters. I have one sister that just, that was is deceased. And I love my sisters. And we talk just about every single day. 
And guess what? You're not going to hear me putting my sister down. You know what? Because we are family. So we are what? We are family. And what family does? Family takes care of each other. And I'm going to tell you something that happened. Uh, I was working at uh, Steve, and uh, I pulled up, and for some reason I got there early, and I see this young lady, her door is open, and she's leaning out of her door, and I'm wondering, she never comes this early. You know what I did in me? I didn't have to ask her what's going on. I just went and said, let me pray with you. That was enough right there. And she told me, she said, right then when you came, you don't know. I was contemplating suicide. Wow. She said, because my husband had left me. And she said, I, was, I just didn't know what else to do. And she said, I got there early and I was just going to sit in my car. And I got there early. I, uh, for what reason? Because God appointed me there. So that's what we got to remember. Okay, y'all, I'm going to try to hurry, okay? Then she says, the next verse, it says, I don't want to skip over it. Let me go back to it. I'll read that one more time to you. And she said to him, don't do this wicked thing. And our next point is, what about me? You ever had a what about me? You ever see everybody else progressing and you're like, what about me? I don't know you what y'all, but I talk to God like that. I'm like, okay, God, what is going on? You know, why I didn't get this or why that didn't happen? And guess what? If you ask him, he'll answer you. But you, do we ever consider that God is moving in some area of our life? And we ask him, what about me? And God says, because I've chose you. We, you know what? We wouldn't mind being chosen like Mary to carry, the, uh, carry Jesus. Yeah. We wouldn't mind that kind of ridicule. They talking about me? And I guarantee you, they talked about Mary. Mary's pregnant? By whom? She was dating Joseph. So what is going on here? You understand what I'm saying? Now, we wouldn't mind taking that. But when we are set up and things are, don't work out and it didn't look like we thought, and we, you know the first thing we say? There ain't nothing but the devil. But sometimes God want to use you as an example. And sometimes it's not like Mary carrying Jesus. It's like Tamar being raped by her brother. And I know some of you have been hurt, and, and I'm, I don't take it lightly. This has never happened to me, but it always hurt me when I hear that. Do y'all hear what's going on in our world? Our little girls are getting raped. And guess what? It used to be just our little girls, but our little boys are getting raped. You know, most men won't say I'm, I, I was raped when I was a little boy because they, they full of pride. They hold that. And you know what? First lady told us one out of five women in the, US, in the United States will be either raped or molested. Molested. Molest, molested. Okay. She told us that. You know, every 68 seconds in, the, in America, a woman is raped or molested or was, or was attempted. Or they, or it was, they are attempted to rape her. Every 68 seconds. Isn't that something? And you know what? We want to go away with the old ways. You know what? My mama, we had 10 children. My mama said, y'all got enough to play with each other right here in this yard. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go spend a night? You say, spend a night with your guy right here. Go spend a night with your brother, go, your sister. We had enough right there. And you know what? Now we want to let them go out, but you don't want to know who they've gone out with. You want to let them go spend a night with their little friends because, I, oh, they went to school with them. You need to find out who it is your children is going to spend a night with. You need to find out where you're sending your children. Don't just let them go out there. And we're wondering why the crime. Look, 11-year-olds gone to prison because they killed someone? A 15-year-old just went to prison for killing her mother, shot her in the face. And then attempted her to kill her, step, her stepfather. Shot him in the face. This is what our world is going in. But what are we going to do, Philadelphia? What are we going to do? We need to stand together, shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand, and say, my sister, I got you. And don't tell me you got me. And then when I call for you, you don't have time to talk to me. You, and if you don't have time, because we do have a busy schedule, make sure you call me back. Make sure you let me know. And then when I come to you and I say, you know what, I'm going to do something, Glow, I want you to stop right then and pray for me. Because I'm going through something. That's an indication that I need you, not later, but right now. We've been having some awesome lessons right here. And you know what's the purpose? We got Atlanta Church. We got Dallas Church. We're fixing to pull up Houston Church. 
You know what First Lady said? We're going to be on one Instagram. We are jars of clay. She said we're going to be a one because you know what? No matter where we are, we are one. We are one Philadelphia. That's what I want to see with us. I want to see us as a one Philadelphia. Isn't that what you want to see? This is why they started Philadelphia. Brotherly love. Unity. Let's, let's, let's be a unified church. Let's say I got your back. Let's say if you need me, I'm here. But some of you don't know how to keep no secrets. Okay? You need to ask God to put a guard over your mouth. Don't let me tell everything that comes to me. You know, you got to be able to have, because if you don't do it, if you don't, if you don't stop yourself, who's going to do it? Wow. Now, Leola will tell you. That's me, because I was old school. I grew up with the old church, the old people. And I'm glad for it, because they're quickly and say, oh, you're not doing that here, sis. And you can go tell whoever you want, you ain't doing it over here. You're not dressing like that. Yeah, I'm bringing it up. You're not dressing like that. You know, I don't tell them, I, when I first got saved, God, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all, when I first got saved, I wore a skirt way down here. I didn't thought that's what I was supposed to do. A long sleeve. I'm like, I'm smothering in here. <laughs> and look at, oh, yeah, yeah, I am again. Uh -huh. But you understand? But soon as somebody tell you about your dress, who she thinks she is? She ain't a sit first lady of this church, but I'm my sister's keeper. Yeah. I'm my sister's keeper. I'm supposed to watch her back when she's not here and watch her back when she's here. Come on. This is our first lady. First lady, you know I don't flatter, but this is our first lady. I told her one night we were uh, playing games, and it was saying, who had the most children? I said, you. <laughs> I said, you got the most children. Because I am older than her. I'm old enough to be her mom. You hear me? But she has my respect. When I refer to her, what I say, yes, ma'am. Out of respect. Not that I put her on a pedestal or made her better. She's my first lady. This is my first lady, and she has it. And so... She should have our respect. They want us to come up. Boy, would be, wouldn't she be proud to say that every sister in here is one. Wow. Every sister online, we're one. And you know, in oneness and in unity, the blessings. You want to be blessed? Let's be one. We're we going to get individually. And guess what? When you start to get blessed, just because you got a bigger house than mine, I got a house. <laughs> I got a roof over my head. Praise God when they, me, she got a big house, I ain't been there yet. Praise God when you see that our sisters are raising up. It's no reason to be jealous. God said, all you had to do was what? Ask. All you had to do was ask. I don't want no big house. I got to clean there. No offense, man, Misha. You understand what I'm saying? But I can go to her house and rejoice. She got a, a farm. No, I'm not supposed to be going through all that. That's not, she got a farm. I love when I see her. She has 17 acres. 17 acres. That's what she has, Glow. And do we have to look and say, what about me? Ask her. The next uh, thing is speak to God. Because she told him, what about me? You didn't consider how this is going to affect me is what she was telling him. She said, the disgrace I'm going to have to carry. She said, you're going to ruin my future. And she said, not only are you going to ruin my future, what about you? She said, you're going to be like a fool in Israel. She was trying to get him to begin to think of what he was doing. And, that's, and you know what? The other thing before this, if you read the whole chapter, he had unwise counseling. Wow. David's uh, brother. What you got, babe? <laughs> Thank you. David's brother. Well, actually, it was his cousin. Because that's David's brother, son. He came and told him, he said, just send to your dad. You're the, you're, the king. you're the prince. Just tell your daddy you're sick. And ask him to send your sister to come cook for you. Tamar was 15. Amnon is 22. And Absalom is 20. Now, 
scripture says, commentary says that it could, it could be that he was jealous. Because one thing, pastor talked to us about Absalom, and he was fine. He was good looking. <laughs> you know, when he walked up, you know, everybody looked. And, she's, and, and that's what they said about Tamar, that she was beautiful. She was beautiful, but she was also a humble little woman. You know, and she just went to go and help her brother. Isn't it something that you go try to do something good for somebody and they turn, they rewarded you with bad? Yeah. Y'all, them hormones is kicking in all. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, y'all forgive me because I want to get to the, how much time I got left? Okay, because I want to get to the end of this. All right, so that was our, our first point was my brother. The second point was, what about me? Our third point is, speak to the king. She told him, you know what? If you want to, you want to do it right, because the laws of Israel, that would cause death. She said, what you want to do is ask our father. Ask him to marry me. She was trying to give him a way out. You know, the Bible says God always gives us a way of escape. First lady did us a message. She, she told us, look, see the exits? There are exits. Look for an exit. And while you're looking for an exit, you pray. Say, God, you know what? You got to get me out of this situation. Because this ain't going to end, end up good. But remember, she's 15. She's naive. She don't even think that this would happen to her. This is my brother. You don't expect your brother to hurt you. Glow is my friend, but I look at her as my sister. She don't expect Leola to hurt her. Am I right? So she didn't expect him to hurt her. So she went and she did what she was asked to do. And he tells, she tells him, speak to the king. But the, the scripture says he refused not. And I know I didn't go through all the scripture. Sorry about that, y'all. But we're going to read it. Verse 13 says, what about me? Where could I get rid of the disgrace? And what about you? You would be like one of the wicked fools in Israel. Please speak to the king. He will not keep me from being married to you. But he refused to listen to her. And since he was stronger than she, he raped her. Our third point is refuse to listen. And I want to give you a definition of listen. You all heard my husband was saying yesterday that uh, I was talking to him. <laughs> and he said, uh, he had his little paper over him, you know, I'm talking to him. And, I'm, and I stopped, I'm like, he had responded, Gloria. So I said, you listening? He said, yeah, I'm listening. I said, oh, boy, you're not listening. And then when he starts saying, I said, okay, go right, you was listening. <laughs> but listening. The definition is to talk, to take notice of and act on what someone says, respond to advice or request. Once she said no, my brother, that was a refusal and he was, he was to stop, but he did not. And then he refused to listen. And I want to read this last part of that listening. Listening is not just having what someone says but sometimes unspoken words. I know you have seen people come in here and they hear it head down and you can feel it. They pass by you and, you're and you're not, you, don't, you don't say a word. And there was a song by uh, Marvin uh, Winans. He said, I tried to let it show, but I guess you just didn't want to know. You didn't want to take the time to talk to me. He said, I tried to, to, let it, to, to, to let you know. And guess what? You just don't want to know. You don't want to know. We too in a rush. I'm sorry. We too in a rush to get in here and somebody out there needs our prayer. Yeah. Take the time to listen. Your children, sometimes we're trying to cook, we're trying to do all this. Take the time to listen. Take the time to listen 
You hear me, guy, girls? I don't know why I keep saying guys. Take the time to what? To listen. Listen. And sometimes you say, man, they talk like Leola. Why, why Miss Leola talk long? I'm waiting for her to get to the point. <laughs> See, I'm just like, okay, okay, get to the point. <laughs> I'm getting there. Take the time to listen. Y'all listen, and not only time, you don't even have to hear what they're saying. Look at their action, the movement. You can see when somebody is not feeling well, or they're going through or something. Something is going on. We want everybody, when you leave here, that you leave with the word, and you leave feeling like God is going to do something for me today. That's how we want you to leave. We don't want you to come here and here and leave out the same way. Because guess what? The word is going forth in here. And guess what? We can't just wait. wait. We can't just wait for the word. Because you can go back home and sit and get down on your knees and say, Lord, I don't know how to deal with this, and I'm asking you to help me. And believe me, he'll help you. I didn't know how I was going to do this word. I said, Lord, it got so much in here that I want to say. And you know what? The Lord said, I'm going to be there for you. I mean, I'm waking up at 2 and 3 o'clock. God said, why don't you go to sleep? <laughs> I, I promise y'all, that's how I talk to God. That's how he talks to me. You know, pastor said, uh, well, we was talking about uh, Sarah, and he said I reminded him I would be that Sarah. Well, Lord, if you had been here. <laughs> I say, he is so, I would, because I want to know. Lord, if you had been here, maybe Lazarus would not have died. But even now, I know. I got enough faith to know that he can do it. Not everything always fall in place like we want it. But every time we, we go through a test, you know what? God wants us to pass that test. And if you don't, it's like a cycle. Yeah. That, that thing come right back around. Yeah. When, I got, when I was really broken, and I was, I'm serious, I was really broken and broken by a friend. I said, this thing, I don't want to take the test again. Wow. So you know what? I'm going to get myself up from here. I'm going to forgive. I'm going to reconcile. And I'm going to do whatever I got to do. But I'm not going through this again. Yeah. And praise God, I didn't go through it again. <laughs> And guess what? That's what we got to do. You got to say, I, I'm going to pass this this time. But just in case I don't and it comes around again, guess what, Lord? I'm going to know how to deal with it yeah. better. Yeah. I'm not going to deal with it the same way. Yeah. I'm at least it come up to 80%. I'm not going to be down like I was before. Okay, so that, we're going to get to the good part. <laughs> Let me tell you all something. When I read this scripture, this text, this was in the 90s when I first... Uh, read about Tamar, and when it says at the end that she was desolate in her, at Brother Absalom's home, it grieved me. I'm like, what happened to her? They say nothing else concerning her, but thank God for that little pastor that we got. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to get back to that, okay, y'all? So we talk about speak to the king. She offers him a way out. She says, you know, if you talk to him, he'll let you marry me. So that was her way of escape. He refused to listen. But not only he refused to listen, after he did what he had to do with her, he threw her out. He told his servants, throw her out. Like she was nothing. She said, this is worse than the beginning. You first said you love me. Now you hate me? Because that's what Satan does. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And you know what I heard Pastor say? Satan will take you long, further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay. And I know they got another part to it. <laughs> but you know, so why we let him play with our thoughts? We got to be able to cast that off. When, when those thoughts come to us, you know what? It says whatsoever things are pure and honest, whatsoever things are a good report, we got to what? Think on those things. Change the way you think. Because if you're thinking something bad about your sister, it's not good. Yeah. If you're thinking something bad about yourself, you are the king's daughter. Yeah. Do you know who you are? We're the king's daughter. We are royal. I might not feel like I'm royal, but I am. Maybe I don't have a red carpet before me, but I am, a, I am the king's daughter. I want y'all to remember that, that. I am what? I am the king's daughter. I want you to keep saying that I'm the king's daughter. When trouble comes, I am the king's daughter. When things don't go with your way, I am the king's daughter. I, you heard what I said? When trouble comes, because trouble will come. Trouble got a way of finding us. 
Even when we're trying to guard ourselves, trouble got a way of finding us. She was not looking for trouble. Y'all saw that? She was not looking for trouble. But sometimes we put ourselves in trouble. And then once we put ourselves in trouble, we want to blame everybody. Admit, I did this. I didn't do it right, Lord. He will hear you. You just speak to him and you tell him, Lord, I didn't work this right. I didn't say it right. And guess what? I'm going back to my sister. I didn't say it right. How many of you bold enough? That's good right there. How many of you bold enough, courageous enough to say, I offended my sister. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going back to her That's good. to tell her I'm sorry. That's good. Do we have that kind of boldness? But we hide it. We tell it to somebody else. And then we wonder, oh, I don't know why she said that. When you're the culprit. You hear what Sam said? Look in the mirror. You're the traitor. It's not the person, your sister on the side of you. You're the traitor. Once you get the confidence to say, I am Doug. You know what? When I walk in here, I walk in. Yes, I do. I walk with my head up. And, I, and when I know I look good, I know I look good. And, I, and you might not like it, but I like it. I know I'll go shopping with my sisters and everything, and they would say, oh, I think this is ugly. I'm like, you do? I'm going to buy that. Well, I just told you what I thought about it. I'll say, yeah, I'm glad you thought about it because I'm going to wear it. Because you know what? I have my own personal. Was I, was I always like that? No. But trials, tribulations, they bring you there. Am I talking right, Michelle? Trials. When you go through some things, you know, you start to realize that it's not worth me stressing about how you feel about me. Amen. Yes, I would love for you all to love me, and I believe. I heard First Lady say, I believe y'all all love me. I don't believe none of y'all would talk bad about me. But just in case you do, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Now, it might bother me. And after, I'm a, after I walk and talk about it and go talk to God about it and work it out, I'm like, you know what? I'm going back to that little church in Philadelphia Christian Church, and I'm still going to walk because this is me. I'm not putting on no show for nobody. This is me. Why am I going to let you stop me from being me? Why do you let people stop you from being you? You don't have to dress like me, talk like me. I'm just as country as butter. <laughs> Y'all ain't never heard that. <laughs> what else country? I think I think butter's country. How Misha? They used to turn their own butter. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But don't let nobody stop you from being you. You're the best you you can be. Did you just hear what God said about you? You're His special possession. You're special to Him. Why you don't act like you're special? Honestly, why you don't like act like you're special? When I see this little girl, Tree come in. Tree come in, baby. I said, let Tree got it going on. I see Misha coming in. I said, look at Misha. Misha got them heels, baby. She rocking them. Yes. Make yourself look beautiful. The beauty that you want to see in the mirror. Because not everybody want to dress like me or talk like me or look like me. I hope y'all don't want to all look like me. But we would look, we would be a picture of God. <laughs> you know what? That's why God made us all different. You know, enjoy your difference. You know, if you got dark skin, enjoy your dark skin. I love this little girl, Sarah. I tell her all the time her skin is so beautiful. Y'all hear? Love, your, love yourself. What's inside of you? God placed you in it. God put that in you. And guess what? Tamar is about to find out who she is. Okay, now this is the good part. <laughs> okay, let me see. All right, we good. Our next, our next uh, point is, where is Tamar? I think I did that. She refused to listen. But let me finish. Just refused to listen. She gets back to her brother's house. He says, just be quiet. Because yeah. vengeance was on his mind. Mm -hmm. And don't think that just came up because of what happened to her. Because if it was so, that's her brother. 
What does brothers do? They protect. They fight for. They stand up for. They defend. He pushed it aside like it's nothing. Y'all don't push other people trauma like it's nothing. We all, we all um, do things in a different way. You might lose a loved one and somebody just come and say, oh, it's going to be okay. But everybody don't grieve the same way. And don't tell nobody how long they should grieve. And the time limit on how much they should grieve. You know what? It's okay. Be there. Be there for when they need you. I just lost a, brother, a nephew. And my sister, she is still grieving. She grieving. He's 51, yes. That's her baby. That's her oldest. And she grieving. So we try to send little messages. Sometimes she'll just send me a tear. That's my sister. Just like what I do, first lady. It breaks my heart to see her go through that. What breaks your heart when your sister going through? You know what? We ought to want to treat others like we want to be treated. If I want you to tend to me, tend to me. If I want you to tend, if I want you, Trish, to tend to me, let me tend to you. But then we want us, we want to do what we want to do. We want others to do for us, but we don't want to do for nobody. Y'all, I don't know if I'm helping y'all. But what I'm thinking, one thing I really wanted to do in here is that I want to bring us together. I wanted to bring us together as one. One group of women, one group of sisters. And if our sisters get it right and we show love to our brothers, they're going to have it too. Because, you know, unity going to bring unity. You know, it will. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like fire. Just like our services are be on fire, it's going to be on fire. We will. We, we, we can do it. Can we do it? Yeah. We can. It's going to take some work. It's going to take some trust. It's going to take that. It's going to take that. If somebody comes to you and you know you can't keep it, I'm not there yet. Yeah. Let me refer you to the uh, first lady or, or let me refer to Trish. Y'all can refer him to me because I think I'm okay with keeping your word. You know, I try not to say anything that would hurt you or harm you. And if you tell me something in confidence, I keep it. We do marriage, me and my husband. And I tell our couples, when they come to us, I tell them, if we come out of what you told us, First Lady and Pastor will set us down in a hot minute. And, they, and, it's, and it's so true. And that they hold us to what we say, confidentiality. But if you're not there yet, you let them know I'm not there yet. Don't let them tell you something that you're going to go and tell somebody else. Come on. Come on. You know, just, just, just say I'm not there yet. Okay? They'll understand. You know, refer them to somebody else. You know, just say, you know what, I'm, I'm, let me find out. Let me talk to somebody. Let me talk to first lady to see who I can direct you to. Let me send you to Miss Mary so she'll pray for you. You know what, we are some older saints here. And you know what? A lot of times we don't think the older saints can't teach us nothing. And we always say we want our elderly te to teach us. But the minute I tell y'all, and some of y'all, y'all know it. I done told you something. You know what? Oh, that ain't what God told me. Oh, okay. Well, just go with what God told you. And then when it don't work out, you know, okay. Well, maybe it wasn't God. You know, not that God tell me everything, but I came from old school, y'all. Old school work. You know, old school work. You know, we thought our parents were so hard on us that we wanted to, couldn't, couldn't wait to get out the house. We couldn't wait to grow up. The minute I grew up and got married, guess what? I didn't know I brought the same old school to my children. Came back the same old way. Because guess what? My mama had 10 children. Well, we did have one that went to jail that was just a hard head one. <laughs> we had a hard head one. But every time we went there, Mama said, I'm going to get him. Yeah. And she referred, she said, because that's mine. That's right. She said, I wouldn't belong to me. I know, uh, Abigail, I'm so sorry. I guess I'm moving so, uh, around so much. Abigail, I'm saying, boy, Miss Leola making us work hard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try to stay still, Abigail, but thank you. <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? Old school worked. It worked, guys. It's okay to tell them no. It'll be all right. 
They might cry and pout a little bit, but it's okay. It's no, you can't go. That's just it. No, you can't have it. I can't afford it right now. Just tell them no. Okay? All right, y'all. This is the last one. Okay. All right. This is the good part. This is the one with sugar on top. It says, where is Tamar? In scripture, it says that she was left desolate in her brother's house. Because when she went to her brother Absalom, one thing else I want to show you before that, when he put Tamar out, he told a servant to put him out, put her out and bolt the door. She was a virgin, right? Most of the virgins, they kept them separated. She had on her virgin robe, just like Joseph. She tore it off. She stripped it, and she cried out aloud. She wanted them to know what has happened to her. You want to cover it. You want to cover your hurt and your trauma. You don't want nobody to know. You want to be like, I'm the strong woman. I can take this. We need each other. We need one another to survive. Talk to someone. Don't hold and bother it. In. Find somebody that you can talk to. Because sometimes just letting it out, just telling somebody, and y'all just have a listening ear. You don't have to say anything. Just listen. Just getting it out helps. But she went back to her brother. How do you say, just be quiet, my sister? He said, I got, I'm going to take care of this. He waited two years, two years waiting to kill his brother. But this is not about him. It's about Tamar. So we go to the book of Gad. He said, the book of Gad? I've never seen the book of Gad in my Bible because our pastor wants us to be educated. He wants us to know the whole truth. They call them the lost book of the Bible. They were lost. They hit them. <laughs> Why would they not want us to know these things? You know what? Why would they want to keep us in bondage? The book of Gad is in, and I'm not going to read the whole story. I want you to go buy one in the bookstore. It's the complete book of Apocrypha. This is going to tell us the story of Timor. Now, y'all remember I told y'all everything was going on at the same time? So Solomon is born. Years have passed. Absalom killed his brother Amnon. Later on, Absalom is killed by Joab. And now David is in his declining years, and David has died, and Solomon is the reigning king. So I think we got the book of Gad. So we're going to do... We're going to find out where is Tamar. Solomon was able to strengthen his kingdom because the Lord his God was with him and greatly magnified him. Later, David's daughter, here's Tamar, Tamar's sister of Absalom, fled to the house of the king of Geshur. Remember I told y'all her mama was Macca. So her, her, her grandfather was the king of Geshur. And she spent a year and eight months in her mother's home, which is in the king's palace. Okay, verse 3. And King Solomon did not know that she left because she went secretly and she concealed her going not only from the king, but all the people as well. And King Solomon said, I will pay a reward of, ro of royal clothes plus 50 shekels of gold to whoever finds Tamar, the sister of my father, and bring her to me. And the king's servants searched for her throughout all the land of Israel, but could not find her. And I'm going to tell you the rest of the story. Because <laughs> I want you to read it for yourself. <laughs> so the king sent out servants to find Tamar. 
And so this is a season where all the kings come and visit the king, who is King Solomon, who is king of over all of Israel. And they got a lot of little nations in that. It's like Louisiana, you know, we got all, we got Lafayette, we got our Palooses. So all the kings from all the different nations came to uh, bless King Solomon. And while they came, the king of Geisha came as well. So Solomon inquired of him. He said, have you seen my sister Tamar, Malka? First he asked, how is David's, well, was one of David's wife was Malka? He said, she's well. He says, how is Tamar? He said, I've never heard of her or seen her. Later on, Tamar, the same thing is about to try to happen to her. And his friend, Prezaz, tried to rape Tamar. And he asked her, tried to get her to come to bed. And there's the prayer of Tamar. Tamar began to call on God. She said, God, you're not going to, don't let this uncircumcised, wicked man let me waste, let me sin before you with holy seed. And there's a whole prayer that Tamar gave to God. And God answered her. And when God answered, guess what y'all know one thing that David was, was good at? Playing the violin. He was like playing music, right? Guess what? Just like her father, she began to play. And while she was playing the music, she didn't pray out loud. The Bible, in the book of God, it says she prayed within herself. And while she's praying, she's playing. And while she's playing, he goes to sleep. And the Lord said to take the sheath that's on his scalpel. And she killed him. And when she killed him, she cried with a loud voice and she began to give God praise. And after she gave God praise, the men heard and came and said, you killed the king's friend. She said, should the king's daughter be treated like a harlot? Now she knew who she is. <laughs> and so this, is, this happened. She did her prayer. After she finished her prayer, they came and got her. And they told her, we're going to jail you. And she said, we're going to send word to the king. She said, nothing shall happen to me and I'll be found guiltless. Because God had answered her prayer. And God had already told her that victory would be hers. Amen. Isn't that a great story, guys? And so... Story ends, and when they came to give a note, they came, the soldiers came to give a note to uh, Geisha to tell him what happened to his friend. The soldiers thought they were coming to spy out Solomon's kingdom. They took the note, they brought it to Solomon. Solomon read the note and realized that the king of Geisha had just lied to him. He said, bring him to me. And when he brought him to me, he said, I asked you about my sister Tamar. You told me you'd never heard or seen. And she said, you will be killed. And they took him out. Then when they brought Tamar to him, like y'all got to say, y'all got to read. Boy, y'all remember that? I don't know if y'all used to be back in my day. Those of you who was back in my day. My mama used to watch that so proper, The Edge of Night. <laughs> Isn't that an Edge of Night uh, series? <laughs> okay, and when the kings, when, when, and our last point is, I am the king's daughter. Solomon said, I will not, you, will not, you will not be my sister, but you will be my daughter. And she, was, she became Solomon's daughter by adoption. Guess what? We've been adopted. Yeah. Have you received the, family, the, uh, uh, the uh, spirit of adoption from our king? Because I'm the king's daughter. I have accepted him in my life. And because I've accepted him in my life, I'm in his family. How about you? If you have not accepted him, you have an opportunity right now. So I want to go back over what we talked about. I am the king's daughter, my brother. What about me? Speak to the king. That's what, you don't, that's what we don't do. We want to speak to everybody else about our issues. You go to the king. When I have a problem and I just don't know how to solve it, 
I'm going to the king. Because guess what? He knows my past. He knows my present. He knows my future. And you know what the best part about it? He does not hold my past against me. Some of you might hold my past and say, well, she wasn't all that. I sure wasn't. I'm still not all that. And I still fall. Some of you still fall. Sometimes I still make failures. But guess what thing I can do? I can get up and I can say I am the king's daughter. And I can call on him. And guess what? He will forgive me of all of my sins. I don't have to worry about it. He says he'll wipe it away like it never happened. And so now if you want to join this family, and not only this family of Philadelphia, but God, if you want to join the family of the king, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, you can only, this only go three ways. You admit that you're a sinner. How many of you ever lied? We all lied. And some of you don't want to admit it, but some of y'all done stole. <laughs> whether, it was, whether it was when you was a kid or not, you done stole. So if you've done all or any of those things, guess what? Right now, you can say, Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner. I don't have it right. And Lord, sometimes I don't understand what, what, what you're doing in my life, but I, like the song said, I trust you. Great is your faithfulness. Can you still trust God when things just don't go right for you? Can you still trust God when you're put in a difficult situation that you didn't put yourself in? When you go to the job and you do all you can and you don't get the promotion? Can you still trust him? You know what? There are some difficult situations that's going to come up in our life. And if you think that is difficult, just wait. Just keep living. Because look how this world is going. Now they're telling us we can do any, a woman can do anything with her body. Is that what God says? Does God say we should abort? Does God say that? Guess what? We got to stop listening to what the world says and what does God say. We are a Philadelphia Christian church. And we want to follow the book that God has given us. God gave us a rule. He gave us a rule book. He gave us a pastor, the first lady that said that I'm, I'm, I'm following him, and so y'all follow me as I follow him. That's what they're telling us. And so guess what? When they don't do something the way we think they should do it. I wasn't in, the, uh, in that closet when God told the first lady to do this or pastor to build this church or that. I wasn't there. Guess what? So who am I to say what God told him or not told him? You know what? I got to stick to my, stay in my own lane and see what God's telling me. So I'm going to keep walking and keep listening to what God has for me to do. And you should do the same. So now you're going to admit that God, God, I'm a sinner and I have sinned before you. I don't always get it right. But I believe that you died on the cross for all of my sins. Oh my God, when I think about that, that God died, Jesus bled for my sins. For my sins, for things that I did, he died for me. And he rose again. And he says that he has a place for me in heaven. I, am I worthy? No. But thank God he put his holiness in me and on me and around me. And that I could ask what I, I will and it would be given to me. So I got to believe that. Do you believe that? Do y'all believe that if I ask God for something, I'm going to get it? And if you don't get it today, do you keep believing? Yes. Do you stop believing? No. The song says, great is your faithfulness. Yes. Great is your faithfulness. Is this, is this faithfulness still great when things go bad, when you go broke, when you lose the house, when you lose the job, when the children don't do what you say? Do, is, this, is this faithfulness still great? Yes. It's still great. So is there any reason for us to have our head bowed down? Or feeling insecure because somebody, I didn't get what somebody else got. He said, ask and it shall be given. Yeah. Believe in him. Confess it with your mouth that I believe in Jesus. I believe that all things can work together for my good. I believe that he's working it for me right now. Now, I know some of you got some situations going on right now. If you got some situations going on right now, I want you to bow your head. And we're going to pray this prayer. Father, as I come to you, in the name of Jesus, you said I can ask and it will be given unto me. Father, I'm asking you right now, in Jesus' name, I believe in you, Father, and I believe there is nothing that's impossible for you. 
You can do all things. You can move mountains. Father God, you can, you can raise up a sick child. Father, and I'm asking you right now in Jesus' name that my situation, Lord God, that you would touch it right now, Lord God. That all things going to work for me right now, Lord God. That I have victory in this situation right now, Lord God. And if it comes, Lord God, to a place that I cannot believe, help my unbelief in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all, I wasn't as uh, thorough as I would like have been, but I didn't want to keep you too long as well. And I hope I didn't keep y'all. I hope I didn't keep y'all here too long. But this book, Pastor talked to us about the book of Jasher. And let me tell you something. If you want to get this book, I don't know. They have them in the bookstore. Miss Marvel. Okay. So y'all will be able to get this book. It's the book of Apocryphy. And the book of Gad. And you want to know who Gad is? Uh, Deacon uh, James, if you were to hear Tuesday night, Deacon James told us who Gad is. Jacob's uh, wife, who was Leah. You know, Jacob had two wives. <laughs> Leah had me, Zephyr. That's her son. And he was a prophet. So, you know, pastor always tell us to, uh, we're going to prove to you that we're just not pulling this out of our head. That we're not making this up. This is the this is the book of apocryphy, and that story about uh, Tamar. And I implore all of you, if you can get this book, read that prayer. I, I got it typed down. First lady, I got you a copy. So, first lady, you wanna? That was awesome. That was awesome. That was awesome. Man, that that was good, huh, y'all? And I love the um, the Apocrypha. And believe it or not, y'all, the Catholic Church has been having this for a long time. So this is nothing new. Um, but I don't need to say anything else. Because everything that was needed to be said was said. Can I get an amen? And so we bless the Lord for using um, our sister tonight. Don't forget, we are going to be reading as a group the book of Amos. And so if you um, are not on our Instagram page, please um, follow us on our Instagram page. It's pcc.womensministry, and we're going to kind of study the books, well, the book of Amos together, and we may do it periodically. But I'm going to go ahead and bless you. We have a little cookies and punch that we have out for you guys. Everybody's good tonight? That was a dynamite word. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And so, most gracious Father, I do thank you for all of the saints in here tonight. We thank you for the word that you put inside, Miss Leola. We pray that it would just um, not we would not only be hearers of the word, but that we would be doers of your word. And every single thing that she spoke through your word tonight, that we would walk it out on a day to day, Father, because we are the King's daughter, daughters. We are special, and we are your special possession. And we do thank you for it, God. We ask that you would bless us tonight. Keep us all throughout the week and we give you all the honor the praise and the glory it's in jesus name we pray amen amen see y'all later beautiful see y'all later thank you